Running out of video ideas is probably the biggest problem every creator faces on this platform. What a lot of creators often forget about is the enormous amount of research required before creating a killer YouTube video. But luckily for us, now there is a plethora of tools out there with the most conclusive data that we can use to get inspiration from and create amazing videos. If you've ever wondered how the top creators within your own niche is able to produce banger videos after banger videos, when your videos are just left to rot at the bottom of the YouTube algorithm, I'm here to tell you that they've all been using research tools in order to create their content. But what tools are the best for creating content on YouTube? Well, that's why in this video, I'll be going over the four tools that you have to know about if you want to create killer YouTube videos and making the entire content creation process a whole lot easier. I'll first be talking about the cheapest option that 99% of creators on YouTube often use and paid options that the only top 1% of creators would love to invest in. So you should definitely stick till the end of this video to understand all the differences between each of these four tools. So to start off, off, this first tool is probably the most overlooked by many creators, but it's the best place to begin if you want a general idea for what kind of videos your niche is demanding from you. This tool being Google Trends. Google Trends is a completely free option compared to the other tools that I will be mentioning later on in this video. On this tool, you can easily search up keywords that are hotly searched for on Google. This may include more general topics such as the US elections or even the newly released iPhone 16. But what a lot of people don't use Google Trends for is understanding how your viewers are actually searching about that content, especially since searches on Google tends to correlate well with YouTube searches. And the main reason is because Google owns YouTube. I mean, obviously, right? Google Trends gives a lot of great information about the search footprint that your viewer is actually leaving behind. Let's use an example to make this a lot more easier for you to understand. If I make a YouTube channel that is more focused on helping a lot of high school students get into a university program, we can put the word university application as a keyword and see what are the best times this word is searched for. And if we also set the range to the past five years, we can see that January and February tends to be the best times when this word is searched for. Now, the reason behind this is because this is the prime time that a lot of high school students begin their university application process. Additionally, if I were to focus my search result on a more specific university, for example, like Harvard, we can see that there is a similar correlation in the data between January and February. Now, taking this data in mind, we can definitely craft some amazing video ideas. We can possibly do videos such as like four tips to know before the application process for Harvard or something like everything you have to know about applying to Harvard. And if you ever want to compare a different keyword, maybe another university like Duke, you can easily add it right here and you can notice a similar pattern in the data. To show you more about the results that I'm talking about right now, let's take a look at my old YouTube channel. A quick rundown for those who don't actually know what I did on my old channel, I used to run a YouTube channel helping a lot of high school students get into my university's business program. So a very, very niche audience. Now, according to the data, you can see that there are sharp spikes in the view graph between the months November and February. And this perfectly correlates to the research that I was just showing earlier about university applications. That's why if you were to upload a video that is being hotly searched for within your niche at that time, you can expect quite a lot of traffic coming to your channel. And this is probably the biggest benefit when it comes to using Google Trends as an analytical tool for making amazing YouTube video ideas. However, there is a big downside when using a tool like this. This downside being is that there isn't a lot of amazing data on the specific searches that your niche is actually looking up about. Google Trends requires you to have a really deep understanding about your own niche. What are they searching for? What are the problems they are dealing with? And relying on the fact that you can be creative with the videos you are going to be making. Google Trends won't suggest similar keywords, videos, or competitors that you can use as reference. And of course, you can't take inspiration from them because Google Trends does not offer that option. But other than that, as I mentioned in the beginning, Google Trends is an amazing tool to get a general understanding of what your viewers are actually searching about. And the best part about this is that it's completely free. So other than using Google Trends, this tool that I'm about to mention is probably the most commonly used tool among the other tools. And the reason behind this is because it's just so effective in generating amazing video ideas that you can post on your own YouTube channel. This tool being vidIQ. It's a no brainer how big vidIQ has become over the recent years. Compared to TubeBuddy, vidIQ is probably the better option at the moment for the price. At $20 a month, there are a lot of features that are offered in this tool to help creators find amazing killer video ideas. I'm not going to be breaking down the entire vidIQ tool here because there is quite a lot of videos uploaded that on YouTube already. So I'm just going to be talking about some of my favorite features of using vidIQ. So to begin with, compared to Google Trends, vidIQ offers a better solution in finding SEO data about specific keywords and terms that are being searched up on YouTube. By clicking on the keywords tab and putting in a keyword of your choice, you can see the amount of searches this keyword is getting and the competition that is associated with it. For example, if I were to use a keyword such as YouTube Grow, 
growth since my channel is about YouTube growth. Uh, ho hopefully you guys understand that. We can see that there is a lot of viewers that are searching about this content on YouTube, but the competition is very high and this speaks for itself. There are so many creators out there that are doing very similar content like me. So this indicates to me that I would have to continue niching down to a point where I can find a keyword that I can take full advantage of. So instead, if we type YouTube growth for agencies, we can see that the search volume is a lot less and the competition is significantly much better. Now, this is a great indicator that your YouTube video will have a higher chance of getting promoted and being specifically shown to those agency owners, which is my target audience to run my business. So by using a keyword tool that is offered in vidIQ, you can find keywords that you can base a video idea around. For example, we can definitely do a video about how to scale your agency to 100k a month with YouTube or another video about the only YouTube growth tutorial for agency owners as what is mentioned in the suggested matching keywords. What I'm trying to get at here with this tool is that you can center your entire YouTube video idea around a very specific keyword. You want to take full advantage of this data you research to make killer YouTube video ideas that are meant for that specific niche. Other than the SEO feature offered in vidIQ, there are other services that are associated that I should definitely be mentioning. One feature that vidIQ does promote often is the ideation tab. With this feature, you can use an AI bot to give you some suggested video ideas that you can be creating on your YouTube channel. The one caveat with using a tool like this is that it doesn't really give you great insight into why these are great video ideas to make in the first place. The AI tool only gives me a prediction of very high for a video idea, but doesn't give me a detailed breakdown of why this is the case. So if you want to use this tool, I suggest only using it if you run into a creative block when making some YouTube video ideas. Another feature that I should also be mentioning is the outlier tab. In this feature, you can see videos that are considered to be outliers for a YouTube channel. So what this basically means is taking into account outlier theory. What this means is that you're researching videos that have outperformed a channel's normal average. The reason why this matters is because you want to take full advantage of all these outlier videos since it is a proven format that these video ideas are working on YouTube, thus indicating that you should definitely be doing something very similar. So with the outlier tab, vidIQ offers some really basic search features with it. You can set the subscriber range, number of views, video length, and etc. And because of this, vidIQ does recommend some videos that you can take inspiration from, but it's not really the best. What I don't like about this feature is it's not really customizable. There are just not enough filters offered to go find the data that you want. I would only recommend vidIQ to creators who want to find in-depth data about the keywords that they should be using in order to craft killer YouTube video ideas. And this leads me on to the next tool that I want to mention in this video. This tool is becoming one of my favorite ones and it's a tool that the top 1% of creators on YouTube are completely abusing, which is one of 10. At $30 a month, it is slightly more expensive than vidIQ. However, I think for the price point, it's definitely worth investing into. If you want really amazing video ideas that gives you immediate inspiration with spending less time on research, then one of 10 is meant for you. The reason I say this is because there is just so much support when it comes to finding those outlier videos that you can work with. To basically summarize one of 10, this tool gives you the necessary flexibility and customizability that vidIQ does not offer for their outlier feature. For example, if we take a look at my screen right here, you can see that if I wanted to make a video about YouTube growth, we can either search for outlier videos or thumbnails that we can take inspiration from. Now, let's say I want to do a video that is similar to this one right here. I then am given the option to find video ideas that are very similar to that sample that I just clicked on. And this is the same case if I wanted to find inspiration for thumbnail designs. And as you can see with these basic tools offered in one of 10, you are offered so much valuable in-depth data about the videos that you want to take inspiration from. You can even use the AI tool feature on one of 10 to generate some video ideas that you can take inspiration from. Of course, not using the exact like thumbnail or title because it is kind of off, but it's just there to give you some ideas on what to work on. And now I'm going to be explaining the best part when it comes to using one of 10. With the filters option, you can be as specific as you want it to be. Unlike vidIQ, you can set very specific parameters that one of 10 must follow in order to produce the results that you want to find. For example, if I click on these three dots right here in the search bar, this actually brings up the advanced search feature. Feature. I can put in the general concept of the video idea that I want to create. Let's just say YouTube growth. This ensures that I only find YouTube videos that are specific to that core concept. Next, if I am aware there are competitors in my niche that I would love to take inspiration from, you can even put their handles in the search feature right here to only find videos made by them. So let's just use this preset that I have as an example right here. And lastly, if I already know some keywords that I would love to rank for, keywords such as YouTube videos, YouTube growth, YouTube scripting, YouTube niche, and how to grow a YouTube channel, I can put these exact words in this filter right here. Other than that, I can also filter out keywords that I don't want to be searched for as well. 
but since there isn't any of them, I'm just going to click enter. And after doing that, I'll be given direct information about all the outlier videos that my competitors have been posting on their own YouTube channels. I can definitely take inspiration from all these videos and see what kind of videos I should be uploading on my own channel. Other than this amazing filter feature, you can be even more specific when doing basic research into your own niche. For example, by clicking on this filter tab right here, you can set a lot more parameters with the outlier videos that you want to find. I like to use these settings that is being shown on your screen because it pretty much eliminates all familiarity bias when researching video ideas. So feel free to copy these settings if you so want to. And by setting these filters and searching up YouTube growth again, you can find a lot more specific YouTube videos that you can take inspiration from. Now, after showing all of these features of 1 of 10, it's a no-brainer why this is becoming the preferred tool that the top 1% of creators are now using. It's one of the best tools out there to find amazing outlier videos that you can take inspiration from to create killer YouTube videos. However, there is one downside of using 1 of 10. You can't really get a lot of good data about your own channel's performance or any projections of your competitors. 1 of 10 is only a tool that is meant to gather data for outlier videos and not provide a lot of in-depth information about your own niche. But other than that caveat, what a tool is a tool that I would 100% recommend any other creator should be using. Now there is one more tool that I want to quickly go over as a final option. This tool basically ties everything that I just mentioned into one single package. This tool being is View Stats by Mr. Beast. At $50 a month, this is a really steep investment you would definitely need to be making. But with all of the features that are offered, it's no wonder why this is a really premium tool. One of the biggest benefits of using a tool like ViewStats is the plethora of information relating to channels and videos. And I'm not talking about your own channel information, I'm talking about your competitors. For example, if I were to search up April and Alter as a channel that I want to research into, since she is one of my competitors and one that is a lot more successful obviously, I can clearly see her growth patterns, the amount of views she is gaining, and the amount of subscribers she has gotten. But the tab I'm the most interested in is the individual data on her videos. If we click on one of April Lynn Alter's most recent videos, we can see all the data that is associated with that content. And just by using few stats, I can see how that video has performed over time. And what I mean by this is that you should be looking at the view graph to see if it's growing steadily over time. If there is a clear correlation of steady growth, this shows that this video still has a lot of demand and viewers very interested in it. Which indicates that you can take inspiration from this video and make something very similar, but of course use your own information instead. Another point that I do want to touch on is the fact that you can see the changes being made to the title and thumbnail by the creator. The reason why I want to take a look at these two aspects is because the title and thumbnail are probably the most important factors when it comes to a video success on YouTube. By seeing what April Lynn has changed about her thumbnail and title, I can draw a better conclusion on what I should also be doing for my own designs and how I should also be structuring it to see similar results. For example, if I also did an interview with a top executive, I should try considering putting both me and the interviewee in the same thumbnail. And this is what April Lynn has noticed 24 hours after the video was uploaded. Before the creation of view stats, all of this information would have only been available behind closed doors and only to the creator. But now with this access, you now have a better understanding on why a certain video on your competitor's YouTube channel has blown up or went viral. Now with all of these features that I just mentioned about video research, this is all offered in the free version of view stats. Crazy, right? All of this information for free. Now in the pro version of view stats, which is their paid version, you get access to even more features. One of these features that is offered is the outlier video research. Similar to 1 of 10 or vidIQ, ViewStats Pro gives immense support to filter out any data that you want to be included or excluded when finding information about outlier videos that are related to your own niche. You can even look up specific thumbnail designs that you can take inspiration from to include in your own video upload. There's not much to really say about the outlier feature that is being offered on ViewStats because it's quite similar to 1 of 10. But the feature that you should definitely be knowing about is the alert tab. You can set alerts about what is happening within your own niche. Similar to the filter in the outlier tab, you can set specific parameters on what you want to be searched for within your own niche, what videos that you want to be following, and competitors that you want to take inspiration from. With this quick alert, you can get instantaneous notifications when a video that has been uploaded within your own niche has went viral or has been considered as an outlier video. Because of this, you can quickly take inspiration from this and hop on the trend to, of course, boost your own channel's growth. Now, with all these amazing features, the biggest caveat when it comes to using view stats is the steep premium price. But from my professional stance, if you have a high budget to be invested in YouTube tools, I would 100% recommend view stats over the rest. This is because view stats basically clumps all the best features that is being offered in all the other tools into one single package. That way, it makes it a lot more easier for you to do your research into killer video ideas and also save you 
a lot of time doing it. So these are the four tools that I would recommend any creator should definitely know about if they want to create killer YouTube videos. When it comes to finding a YouTube video idea, it's always important to understand how your niche is operating in the first place. So if you want to learn a little bit more information about that, why not you just click a video that is being shown in the top left hand corner or the right hand corner right now. Other than that, if you enjoyed what is being mentioned in this video, why don't you leave a comment saying what is the tool that is bent for you and how you're going to be using this tool to create killer YouTube videos on your own YouTube channel.